Hello. Kind of, kind of nerve-wracking, isn't it? Um, we are Plum Jungle. I'm Pete Longworth. I'm a photographer. And there is a, a third musketeer, and that is Christopher Barron. Chris doesn't know we were doing that to him, so when he sees this, it's going to be funny. Hi, hi buddy. <laughs> uh, Chris is a filmmaker. He's the one who sort of uh, joins our little triangle. And uh, today we're here to talk about what if you love what you do. Uh, we're in the privileged position that we actually adore what we do, uh, our professional and our personal lives are very sort of closely mingled. So it's a, it's a real uh, privilege for us that we do love what we do. Um, we oh, we could get oh, into yeah, it. I don't really know. The, the perils of not really practicing, <laughs> I guess. So we did a project together, and uh, this was our first collaboration called Life on Top of Hyde Park. And so Pete had done a beautiful um, work that started off as a 20-page brochure. And Pete? Yeah, it was a commercial uh, photographic gig that basically uh, I was to come in and shoot 20 pages for an information brochure, a uh, fairly standard sort of procedure. What actually happened with this little, little project was... <laughs> well, it, it just evolved and exploded. It, and <laughs> continues to. So it's, it's been a good little exercise on many things, and we're going to talk about some of the things that we've learned uh, through that. But this little information brochure kind of exploded into a, a coffee table book. It turned out to be about a 160-page coffee table book, which I might spin around a little bit later for you to have a quick look at, and it'll be yeah, here afterwards. I'll do that. Okay, we can start that now. Um, so the coffee table book, which was a, a pretty big thing to come out of a small commercial gig. And one of the things that I really loved about this was the Be fact nice that we got such an artistic product from a commercial context. And that just comes from the fact that we really do love what we do. And by putting forward what we, what we love, and that is definitely more the art side of things, the, the commercial side of it obviously puts the dollars in the pockets and keeps you fed. Um, but for us, it, it's definitely a labor of love. So this, this little coffee table book then went on to be a bigger and better again, where it turned into a, an exhibition. So again, off this commercial little endeavor, now all of a sudden I have a, a full-scale exhibition, a big flag on the moon, a very, very unique exhibition space, about 20 stories above Hyde Park, which for anybody who knows that it, it's sort of Sydney's version of Central Park. So it's right down the CBD. So my, my pictures are hanging, you're sort of, you've got one hell of a view, and <laughs> it, it was quite, quite a, a fun little endeavor. For the, for the kickoff of that, uh, wasn't happy with just doing the exhibition, um, and that's when Michael started to get his, his fingers dirty with the project. Yeah, so I said, I said, oh, Pete, you really need some music behind that. So I was so inspired by Pete's photography that, um, and we've been good mates for like over 10 years, and so I wrote this whole soundtrack, just my love to him, I love Pete. And Thank so I wrote Michael. the soundtrack and <laughs> put it together, and um, on the night we had performers come in, we had um, someone on a Stoneway piano, we had Yama playing tabla, he's amazing. I didn't know this, by the way, I showed up to my own exhibition and Michael was doing the music yeah, and I walk in the and there's an Afghani family <laughs> sitting in the corner of my exhibition. The rugs are out, the tablas are out. No idea what any of it was, I hadn't heard any of the music, I didn't care, I knew he'd do an amazing job, but it was just, it was fun. It so, was a lot of fun. So moving on from this, we had um, some interesting people, some interesting characters come along. So we had people um, from the New South Wales. Talk Premier about Sports. the music first. Oh, the, that Mike did a, it. It <laughs> wasn't enough to just do it at the exhibition. Mike put a whole album together, <laughs> which uh, we, we made some friends at Apple, and we actually got released on iTunes. <laughs> so now this tiny little 20-page commercial in out three days. See you later. Is now tying in with all this music and the visuals. And so, to up our kung fu with that, we brought on Christopher Barron. And Christopher Barron was, is, is basically the glue that <laughs> glued these images to, to the music. And so you guys will get a taste of that a little bit later on. But oh yeah, so back to the, the Premier's Notable office. Notable characters, yes, <laughs> yes. Sorry to interject. No, that's all right, yeah. Okay. It's all good. So back to the Premier's office, we had, um, yeah, we had them come along and check it out and they loved Pete's work. And next thing, they're inviting us to be their feature artist for Australia Day. And we're like, what, this is crazy. Which is kind of, kind of funny, they sort of 
<laughs> let's let's let, we're thinking we might put a couple of pictures of yours up in a little maybe like a, a tent, a marquee, like a three by three sort of marquee on Australia Day, which I thought was absolutely astounding. But of course, that wasn't enough. The whole thing took on a little bit of a life of its own. Again, they had a, a projector, or they had a screen that was going to be down at, at Australia Day. And uh, Mike and I just sort of started out doing some sort of collaborations where we were taking the image and the sound would bring it together. So the moment we heard that there's a, a screen, there's a massive screen, we're like, yeah, we're all on top of Let's that. run down, let's plug a little laptop in, and let's, let's project. So this big screen goes beep, Yeah, beep, truck rolls in, an eight meter screen comes up. And then we say, hey, well, why don't we get a Steinway piano in? And they're like, yeah, okay, let's get a Steinway piano in. So next thing they're shipping in this grand. <laughs> so now it's a performance piece, because we have a Steinway piano, we have a percussionist come from Japan, yeah, we have a dappled afternoon day. light. It was just Australia Day, and we are the featured artist on the day. My three by three meter marquee tent is now 80 square meters <laughs> worth of tent, because we've just sold them the idea that this is a good idea. Now there's a lot Mark of work involved to kind of <laughs> inspire people who work for government agencies because they don't always have the... That's it. So Sorry, for, <laughs> the moment I started saying that, I realised there's probably plenty <laughs> out here, so I'm going to... So we're going to show you a little bit of, of what went on, including a, a contemporary dance piece that I commissioned an ex-student of mine to do, and I had, we had no idea, we, we hadn't even <laughs> seen it, and so Same all of thing a sudden, again. during the performance, they come out of the middle of the crowd and just break into dance. And I so didn't think, I thought they were just some drunk kids <laughs> who came and, came and started bombarding our show. I was like, what's going on? Because <laughs> I had no idea any of this was going on. So here we go, this is a little taste. So just a little taste of how that project evolved. So that, that was, again, off a, a, nice little, uh, a nice little kind of commercial gig that blew up. And uh, so I guess what we're talking about today is what if, what if you do what you love and... Uh, what if you stay true? Uh, stay you, stay true. <laughs> stay true, stay, stay true, you. Stay you, yes. This is why we write things down. Um, and that is basically what we did for this entire project. There was no, outside of that initial um, indication of a commercial endeavor, which by the way, it had an amazing art direction, so it, uh, it certainly had a, a good sort of run before I, well, before I got to it. But the whole way through, this was simply what Mike and I um, dreamt up and did, and we stayed true to what we wanted to do. It consequently, you know, sort of to get it done the way you've done, I mean, we spent a lot of pennies that we had, we spent a lot of pennies that, that we, we didn't have, have. <laughs> and, um, but it was well worth it. We did, we, we did some fundraising, we got some sponsorship, and all those things allowed us to keep it exactly the way we want it. So creatively, we weren't answering to anybody. And that was an amazing step for us. But you also have to take the, the yin to that yang. So collaboratively, it's, it's so interesting working with other artists from different fields. Um, I know for a fact um, the way Pete works as, as a photographer changed my perspective on the way that I capture sound. And so now I find myself capturing sound the way a photographer would capture a moment and so now I find like studio I don't need a studio I hate the studio I want to capture something real in its environment for that moment so you know I find myself um, you know tracking shamisen players on Pete's balcony and you know she's got a nice little glass of rum next to her and you know some chimes going in the background and planes flying <laughs> overhead but it's just all so beautiful and you capture this beautiful um, sound and then um, we have Chris. and I, yeah, Chris has also kind of influenced the way I came from quite a traditional photographic background where you'd sort of do the the black and white. It was it was very traditional. The way they shot, I was a very tough editor. I, I didn't keep a lot of junk sitting around. But after what you're going to see a little bit later in the collaboration that we had, my whole work process started to change as I sort of opened myself up to different ways of doing things. I now don't delete a picture. You may have seen me running around doing all sorts of sort of 
silly things with my camera. I'm going to do that in a minute as well. But it, um, by working with, with Mike and with Chris, it's completely changed the way that creatively I approach what I do. And that's really helped the buzz that I have for what I do and getting back to that loving what I do. Because it's now there's this exponential learning curve for me, and I'm absolutely adoring it. But it all came from the collaboration. And this whole project went from, again, a um, very simple beginnings to uh, something much, much bigger. And uh, we're just going to let this play, uh, give you a little bit of an idea of what happens when we take Mike's, Mike's sound, put it with uh, an image of mine, and let Chris do what he does.
Max and Brock and Lindsay running out of time very quickly. So, um, one, one of, of after you, after you. Oh, one of one of our our driving mottos has been to be the train. And so in everything that we've done, we haven't waited for, we, we never waited for projects to come up or anything like that. We kind of just saw an opportunity and just ran with it and just went ballistic creatively and just like, <laughs> And uh, I think that's sort of evident. We get one thing, we sort of get an idea of what we can do with the next and then we run after it. We kind of dream up a bit of a vision of where we want to take it, where we could take it. Um, and then we try and figure out how to do it. it happen. And um, just to continue on our little journey, our, what is our we get this song? call from Chris and talk about being the train. <laughs> uh, Chris, unbeknownst to us, had decided to send our film out to all these various film festivals. And one so, of the one of the films we did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we, we get, get a these call calls back, and from... Chris is on the phone going, "Hey guys, um, we got into the New York Independent Film Festival, and we're going to New York," and we're like. <laughs> we're like, how how did that happen? So he he'd entered us into some films. We earned a, an official selection over in the UK. We screened at the Cannes Short Film Corner. We we're on Rage, our national television station, our music channel, and um, and it's all just because you know we decided to just run with this project and just go with it. But um, we Pete dropped a bit of a bombshell on you. <laughs> well, should we? Um, <laughs> uh, should we tell? Him? Oh, we'll, we'll save that till later. I don't so, think we have till later, Michael. To be honest. <laughs> I have to be honest. Um, right, what, come on, let's be a quick train. Well, then. should we press play and we can Absolutely. just maybe talk let's and see what happens? <laughs> um, I'm going to jump to a slide after this, so if you could all visualise a little bit further forward. This is the piece, uh, one of the pieces that, uh, well, the piece that Chris did a little surprise calling us with. Stuff around, have a look, and uh, never see that book again. To Richard what? and everybody at TEDx, this is a real privilege. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you guys.